Enormously. I mean, I, I, you're right. It expanded my range and my, my understanding of, of what other people think. Um, they obviously come from a completely different perspective in Somalia. Not only are they um, Muslim and African, but they're also very isolated. So Somalia, as a, as a rule, has always been difficult to penetrate for out outsiders. That was true when Richard Burton was there in the 19th century, too. Um, it's, it's a closed culture and um, they have their own way of thinking. And also the, also the language is not related to most other languages you've heard unless you, you're familiar with languages in Ethiopia. And so they would get angry. That's the temperament of the Somalis. They're very fractious, very difficult people. So okay. the Congo, these knives come from sure. the Congo? Okay, the people there? They're pygmies, actually. I mean, right. that's an even Same, more just specific West Africa. group. You know, West, we can just okay. even do West Africans. Okay. Okay. Where slaves, where the West, uh, where the Western slaves, mm -hmm. American slaves come from, um, and just across the continent, not even that far away, you know, there's Somalia. You know what Somalians look like, right? Yeah. And Ethiopians, mm -hmm. right? You think about them and how they look, and think about how, the, you know, uh, West uh, West Africans look. Are they the same race? Well, very They're different very, very physical dark, characteristics. Very dark. Right? But Somali, right? Somalis look different than everybody. Right. Clearly, right? You know a Somali immediately, right? F same continent, same pigmentation, basically. Very right? thin. Yeah. Uh, their facial structure, very different. Mm -hmm. uh, why are they black? Why are they the same race? Is On the other hand, Somalis don't want foreigners involved in their political life. Translation, the local government which was propped up by the U.S. government for nearly two decades, is ineffective and corrupt. The government is perceived by locals as predatory and sustained almost exclusively by outside actors, which isn't shocking. The government was convened in Nairobi, set in place by the U.S. and Ethiopia, and has spent years failing to affect policy changes to improve civilian lives. In fact, far from it. Hey, Thomas C. Mountain, you are an expert on the Horn of Africa. So your thoughts on the recent WikiLeaks Cablegate revelations that the U.S. essentially hired Ethiopian President Meles Sinawi, I'm probably saying that incorrectly, to invade Somalia in 2006. Meles was sent in, and I don't think he was too happy about it, because in history, no Ethiopian regime has ever picked a fight with the Somalis. Uh, there was a war between Somalia and Ethiopia in 1977, but that was started by the Somalis. So I don't think any Ethiopian president in his right mind would volunteer to start a war with Somalia. So I think he pretty much was pressured by his masters that pay his salary and his military budget uh, in the United States. Somali pirates killed four Americans recently. How would you handle it, President Donald Trump? It's, again, a total lack of respect for this country and maybe even for the world. Give me one good admiral and a few ships, I would wipe them out so fast. Can you believe they're holding 40 ships, 800 and some odd men and women, I guess, and we do nothing. And these guys are like, this would be easy. You give me one good, smart, tough admiral and a few ships, I would wipe them off the face of the earth. They would go so fast, they wouldn't even have a chance. Can you believe that these guys are taking tankers that are a thousand feet long, that cost hundreds of millions of dollars, and just taking them with rowboats? It's hard to believe. 2008, we had the Somalian pirates, the little skinny Africans took over one of our boats. I was so embarrassed, because that had been different. Those some big, healthy, cheetah wrestling Africans. But, this is a Somalian. <laughs> Can you imagine getting robbed by three of these? What, what kind of a place is Somalia? It's ranked number two on the world watch list, which is Open Doors academic uh, measurement of persecution. But what's it like as a country? And it's what happens also when the church fails in her mission because for 2,000 years, we didn't get to that place. Mm. For 2,000 years, we didn't get to these villages. For 2,000 years, we didn't get in these huts and break bread with these camel herders and, and, and give them a better story. People and you called I did not ignore it. I said I'm what do you from. consider to be a coon? I, okay, first Enlighten of all, I, us. Okay, first of all, 
what I consider to be a coon, what I just described, those two Somali guys we're talking about, when you see white people above you, so you treat them a certain way different than you would treat other people. Are other you familiar? Ethnic... Are you familiar with Somalis? Yes, I grew up around Somalis. A lot of my best. Okay, okay. You, you know, wait, 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 really wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Of all the African groups, let's be honest, Somalis are the least that you could accuse of kissing white people's ass. Let's why just is that? keep it honest. Explain why. You don't, uh, I don't see it. What do you mean you don't look see at it? Even, look at even their country. They are the ones that are brave what, enough why? to shoot at white soldiers. So what? They come to with them. Sir, you literally came from the coon zone of Africa. And I said... In Mogadishu, the few white people keep a low profile. Uh, it's very difficult, very difficult. There is, there's no white people here. So that's why you guys must keep a low profile here. When you don't go out, don't let the people see you. Because the, no, the moment they know there's white people, then they start murdering. We see that Somalians do not have friends. You can't be friends with Somalians. That's why no Somalian can enter the base. We changed. If not, we have to work with Somalians during our mission. But they take advantage of our peacekeeping mission to kill our soldiers. Well, another example is in Somalia. In 2006, Ethiopia invades Somalia destroys the Union of Islamic Courts, which has brought peace to Somalia for the first time in 15 years, and creates a half a million refugees in uh, their occupation of Somalia and the warfare there until they're kicked out two years later by the Somali resistance headed by al-Shabaab. Uh, Ethiopians are replaced by the uh, African Union, supported by the West and the, the United Nations, who create another half a million refugees by flattening 50 square kilometers or 30 square miles of Mogadishu. So now you've got a million Somali refugees sitting in a refugee camp, and what, lo and behold, this summer, the World Food Program and other uh, Western aid agencies announced that they're cutting aid to the Somali refugees, which they created. The minimum aid was cut by 70%. In other words, they're going to give 30% of the food they allow, they need to survive, and they're going to starve the Somali refugees in the process. And then a few weeks later, what do they do? They're crying crocodiles here, saying, oh, we need hundreds of millions of dollars to provide the Somali refugees with what they need to eat. And all the while, they're spending millions of dollars buying tanks, helicopter gunships, and uh, artillery for the, the troops that are occupying Mogadishu, which are creating the refugees in the first place. We're back now among the Somali refugees in East Africa. This is what it is to be a refugee. They've lost their homes, their wealth, and their country. But walk around Hagadera and you realize you're with the toughest people you've ever met. People with lessons to teach about life and death in an unforgiving land.